This is a summary of the radio drama entitled Sorry, Wrong Number by Lucille Fletcher. Mrs. Albert Smith Stevenson is the only character in Lucille Fletcher's 1943 drama which was originally produced for the suspense radio program. An invalid whose unspecified health condition keeps her confined to her bed in an upstairs room, Mrs. Stevenson, whose first name is not provided, is usually attended by a maid. On the night the drama takes place, she has given the maid the night off. As her husband, Albert, is still at work, she is alone. The play opens with Mrs. Stevenson speaking to the telephone operator. She reports that her attempt to call a particular number was unsuccessful. Surmising that some wires had gotten crossed, she reports that she was patched into the wrong number. The conversation between two men that she listened to revealed the most dreadful thing, a murder plot. She directs the operator to trace the call. The audience cannot hear the operator's lines of dialogue. The operator apparently does not comply as Mrs. Stevenson gets the busy signal of the number she had originally dialed. Mrs. Stevenson redials the operator again and becomes more insistent saying that tracing the call is her civic duty. She now agrees to be connected to the chief operator to whom she repeats her story. Mrs. Stevenson insists that it is absolutely necessary to stop the terrible, cold-blooded murder of an innocent woman. She provides her own name and phone number to the chief operator, repeating her demand that the other call be traced. She again provides the reason that the intent is to prevent the dangerous man from killing someone which will occur at 11.15 that night. As the operator apparently tells her to contact the police directly, she first dismisses the idiotic suggestion as tying her up in red tape, then hangs up and calls the police. Stating that she is reporting a murder, she revises the claim to indicate that it is a forthcoming murder. The men she heard are planning to murder a woman who lives in a house near a bridge. Other details of their conversation include references to the client who hired the man to kill her with a knife and steal her jewelry. As she provides her name, phone number, and address, she reveals that her home is near the Queen's Morrow Bridge and 2nd Avenue. She also states that she is invalid, her husband is working late, and it is the maid's night off. She asks that they send a radio call. As she muses that the neighborhood describes sounds like her own, she also admits that she is nervous about being alone. She describes her maid Eloise as big and strong but lazy and tells them how much her husband adores her. She has been ill for 12 years. As the police officer apparently declines to help, she insists that her situation is a high priority, calls him an idiot, and slams down the phone. Next, she calls the operator again and has them call her husband's number, which is still busy. Then the phone rings. When she answers, there's no one there. This happens once more. Then she redials the operator. Admittedly very nervous, she berates the young female operator for the inefficient service and her unpardonable rudeness, stressing her own suffering she explodes. You're so stupid! A 
After she hangs up, the phone rings again, and again no one is there. The next time she picks up, however, the call is from Western Union with a telegram from Albert. He is not coming home but going to Boston on business at 11 p.m. Now, Mrs. Stevenson is truly distraught. She thinks that if she has to stay home alone, she will go mad. She decides to hire a nurse to stay with her. From the operator, she gets the number of Henchley Hospital, then dials them direct, asking for the nurse's registry and telling the reception that she wants a trained nurse whom she will hire immediately for the night. However, the woman she must speak with, Miss Phillips, had gone to dinner at 11 p.m. In this way, Mrs. Stevenson, now shouting into the phone, learns that the time is 11.14 p.m. While still on the line, she hears a click, indicating that someone is on the extension phone downstairs in the kitchen. She hangs up with the hospital and once again dials the operator. As the play ends, she whispers into the phone, urging the operator to believe that she is in desperate trouble and cannot speak louder because someone could overhear. Someone is in the house. She insists, the murderer. She knows he is listening on the extension. As she begs the operator to get the police, she hears the click when he hangs up the extension, then hears him coming up the stairs. As she orders over and over that the operator call the police, her voice is drowned out by the noise of a train crossing the bridge outside. Her scream coincides with a train whistle. Next, for the first time, the audience hears a different voice. At the police station, Sergeant Martin is answering a call. He responds to the man on the other end. Yes, sir. What, sir? Wrong number? Okay. Good night, sir.